What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I'm your host Jonathan Parkinson and in this episode we're going to be talking about Linux Mint on the Chromebook. Now this is going to be a version of Linux Mint that's been specifically made for the Acer C720 Chromebook. And I'll have a link in the description if you want to go ahead and try that out. Uh, you are going to need to make sure that you do have it set up so you can boot from a live USB. If you don't know how to do that, you can search my channel to finding out how to do that. Uh, or you can just go ahead and Google it. Now, that means uh, that you're going to be able to uh, create a live USB, which is an ISO file, which is like you know a Windows, X or a Windows XP disk back in the day or anything like that. Same type of... Uh, similarities except this is going to be for Linux which is free to use open source and what you do is you'll just create a live USB or you can use a application called uh, uh, let me double check uh, air no not air droid it is actually going to be called drive droid drive droid one word and it'll be for Android devices if you're on iOS then you're gonna have to uh, look for some other method uh, such as another computer to be able to do that but anyways getting back to what we're doing here is I just wanted to kind of show you some, you know, quick basics of it. So as you can see, it's Linux 17.1 Cinnamon. It's on a 64-bit. Uh, I'm on an Intel. Uh, I do recommend Intel-based uh, computers as far as Chromebooks if you're going to be looking into doing Linux. Uh, but again, this is going to be called Rebecca. That is the name of this distro. Uh, it's extremely smooth. As you can see, it comes with a nice little bar at the bottom here. I can put this bar on the sides or on the very top, depending on where I want it. It comes with all this on the bottom, pre-set up. Uh, I actually added that little bit right there, which is easy just by right-clicking it. Uh, you're going to see the nice little windows. I've changed a little bit of this layout. So if I go into settings, you're going to see that there's themes, uh, options for changing the themes. So if I wanted to come here and add or remove themes, I can do that as well. Uh, here's some available themes online to change it to, what the looks will look like. So let's see if I can do a quick little change. So if I touch this one and click apply, You'll see that kind of changed at the bottom. It got a little bit smaller. Uh, also, that changed. So it all, you know, depending on what you want, how you want things to look like, uh, that's how it's all going to go down. Uh, when you go ahead and click on available themes, this will need to update. So that, that could take about five, ten minutes, depending on your internet connection. Uh, another thing you can come in here and change is also. Uh, let me see where it was at. Uh, screen locker. I think this is kind of cool to be able to come in here and manipulate some of the stuff on that as well. Um, and yeah, you know, with this distro in comparison to, let's say, Ubuntu, a stock Ubuntu or elementary OS, which is two distros you've seen me do a lot of videos on, um, this one is going to be the best. Uh, how would I explain it? If elementary OS is the most similar to kind of like a, a Mac OS uh, or OS X then the Linux Mint is going to be the closest to Windows. Uh, you're going to get your traditional start bar, you're going to get some of the you know applications, your favorite applications, you're going to have all the tabs that are opened, and then on the right hand side you're going to have everything else. Uh, this is going to be more or less like Windows XP. Uh, I like it, this is probably my second favorite distro. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if I want to actually go ahead and say that, it's my second favorite distro. I don't really have a favorite distro, each has their own use. Uh, as far as a workhorse type environment, this is going to be the basics that I would probably recommend. Um, again, with this exact distro that I have used, it is you know, made just for the Acer C720 Chromebook. I'll have a link in the description to go ahead and download this version. Uh, when I say it's made specifically for the Acer C720 Chromebook, that means that the mouse pad, trackpad, uh, your volume uh, will work right out of the box. Uh, you'll be able to go into your keyboard and make some changes in that as well if you need to. So if I want to go with some shortcuts, this is where you'll come in here and, you know, add your volume, change your buttons to that. Uh, but that should be kind of like that on most of the distros anyways. Um, suspend works. Uh, everything kind of works right out of the box. I haven't had a problem yet. I've only been running it for about 24 hours, give or take, and I haven't had the full opportunity to really jumping into it. But I just wanted to kind of come up here and show you, you know, a brief understanding, uh, specifically because I have a lot of people that are jumping in on the Linux side of stuff and that have, have a Chromebook, and they're not really, you know, too sure of how Linux works. They just want to get the most out of their Chromebook. So that's why I'm kind of going over this understanding of it. 
Uh, so what the big thing with Linux Mint is you're going to have a big option to changing your lock screen, uh, your layout look. It's just it's really customizable and it's been set up to be customizable with a lot of UI support. Um, a lot of the other uh, distros, such for example for Elementary OS, you'd have to install Elementary OS tweaks to be able to go in here and manipulate it. Whereas people create themes and extensions and stuff directly for Linux Mint. And the community is extremely big. So it's going to be on a little bit smaller than Ubuntu straight out of the box as far as how many people are supporting it. But with Linux Mint being uh, relying on a lot of the uh, dev packages, which are Ubuntu based packages, that it's going to work, you know, alongside it. The only difference is really just going to be how everything's laid out and how everything is controlled. But for the most part, if you find a problem on Linux Mint and you check, you know, Ubuntu forums or anything like that, they should kind of work for the most part with each other. The only difference really is going to be the UI side of things, which is going to be like, you know, the, these bars and that type of stuff. Uh, but that's all I really wanted to talk about. I, I do approve of this distro. I find it, you know, smooth. I'm going to be probably running it for the next month or so just to kind of fully try it out and get the full, you know, features set up, see how it really tests. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, as always, they leave them down below. Don't forget, if you are trying to install this, you are going to be able to, or you're going to need to be able to boot from a live USB. So do some research on that first before you kind of come in here and ask questions on that, because I do get quite a few questions and. There's a few other steps you need to take care of before you can even get to this step. Um, as far as booting it up on Crouton, the way that works is if you install Crouton and you want this type of desktop, uh, you might be able to just you know install the XFC desktop and then manipulate this much you know this bottom bar to what you want and get it to look similar. Uh, as far as getting Cinnamon running on a Crouton, that all comes down to whether or not somebody has developed support for it. So. You know, it's, the option is out there. Anybody can build the extension to get this support on there, but you're gonna have to go ahead and learn, you know, some backside of some uh, Linux, and then how the Crouton script is set up, and then you'll implement it in the Crouton script, and then that way anybody can download it. Um, but that's, you know, a little bit deeper for those that kind of understand all that stuff. I don't recommend trying to jump in and do that if you don't really understand Linux, or don't have some free time, because it's gonna take a little bit of uh, effort and time on your part. Um, you might be able to find some old Crouton scripts. So when you go to the main page for Crouton and download it, you could very well uh, see if anybody has an old version of it. And that way, that script actually supports Cinnamon. I'm not sure if the support it changes from time to time, as you know, every time they update Crouton. But some of the older scripts, um, and I'll see if I can dig one out, will have support for Cinnamon. So. You know, I don't. I think you're going to be having to force on 12.04, which is fine. That's still stable until uh, I think 2017, I believe. But again, that's all. You know, you're going to have to get into the Crouton maybe community, which is on Google Plus, and ask around there and see if you can get something going. Uh, but if, again, this is just the kind of you know brief overview, uh, understanding of it, what it looks like, and so forth. If you do have any questions or comments, as always, then leave them down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next video. Peace.